Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and it's my pleasure giving you your first look at the new features for the January 2014 update for Photoshop CC. As you know, Photoshop CC is a part of Creative Cloud and therefore gets regular feature updates along the way. So this is the January 2014 update and let's now take a look at what's new inside Photoshop CC for this update. One of the first things you'll notice uh, in this particular image is that we have a scene what looks kind of beautiful here with the trees and the fall and everything going on, but the train itself looks like it's, it has a problem. This is a typical problem of people doing compositing, putting two or more images together that weren't necessarily photographed at the same time, same angle, same perspective uh, for the purpose of compositing. So we have this train here that looks like it's flying off the tracks and it is on a separate layer, just like the train on the lower track there is also on a separate layer. And we'd love to composite them together and make it look a little bit more realistic. So in order for that to happen, we need to adjust the train itself and bend it and warp it uh, to be in the right perspective. And luckily, there's a new feature under the edit menu called Perspective Warp. If I just simply switch to Perspective Warp, the first thing I need to do is now teach Photoshop what the perspective is for this particular train. In other words, Photoshop doesn't know there's a train there. It just thinks there's pixels there. It doesn't, it's flat, it's two dimensional. It doesn't know anything about it. So we need to show it what the current perspective of the train is by simply taking this new tool and dragging out uh, our first plane, which we're gonna warp and, and manipulate to be on the side of the train. Now we're gonna give it uh, a second plane from, for the front of the train. And again, once I get these two planes to, uh, near each other, they will automatically snap and lock in place. Now at this point, I just need to teach it what the current perspective is. So for example, I can pick up the back of it and say, you know, the train's going off at this angle and it's kind of uh, coming over, maybe right about there. And the front of the train looks pretty good, maybe a little bit more that way and a little bit more uh, that way. And I can then, once I've aligned this to the current perspective of the train, I can switch modes from layout over to warp. And now when I switch over to warp, it says, okay, now that you've shown me what the perspective is, you can go ahead and warp this into the persp perspective that you need. I can have it automatically straighten out um, lines. So I already fixed the front that easily with one click. And for the back, I can manually just go ahead and pull the train down onto the track. And then of course, adjust the perspective uh, for the back of the train to kind of get it just about right, right about there, I would say. So once I click OK, that's it. The train is now in the proper perspective. Now keep in mind, the train layer itself was a smart object and the perspective warp is smart object aware. So I can always come back in, turn that off, turn it back on, double click on it and get right back to the same settings if I, in case I need to adjust it in the future. So that's for the first train. Let's go ahead and sl uh, select the second train on the bottom here so we can try it one more time. Edit, Perspective Warp. And once again, uh, we'll go ahead and line this up um, potentially with the side of the train. And then we'll go ahead and for the back of the train and create our second plane. And again, it'll just snap in place and the back looks pretty good. I just need to adjust the front uh, for this train that's going down at an angle and perhaps bring this down to kind of again, line it more up with the current perspective uh, of the train. And once I get that kind of lined up the way it should be, then we just switch over to warp. And once again, we can just pick up the train and kind of tilt it and twist it and adjust the perspective so that it's more in line with the tracks that it's about to um, go on to. Click OK, and once again, uh, that is on a smart object, so I can go ahead and turn it off, turn it on, see our before and after, to see just how easily and quickly we made this whole scene look a lot better and a lot more realistic. So that's Perspective Warp. That's probably the big new thing. Compositors are gonna love this in Photoshop CC. And now let's go ahead and head over to the second thing, which is um, our new, uh, ability to have linked smart objects. So for example, I have two Photoshop files here. I have this one, which is a website uh, mock-up here in Photoshop, and I have a second version of it or a second page from the website, another mock-up here in Photoshop. 
but they, are, they have one thing in common. They're using the same logo in the upper left-hand corner in both files. Now, traditionally, um, if you want to place an Illustrator file, which that is, inside Photoshop, you just go to your file menu, choose place, find the Illustrator file, bring it in, and it would come in automatically as a smart object, but it would be embedded. So that means if you want to make a change to it, you would double click on the one that you embedded in the first file, make the change, save it. And then if you had it in five other files, you'd have to go make that same change five more times. Now, when you go to file menu and choose place, you have a choice from the old workflow of placing it embedded or now placing it as a linked file. So this is very um, common to those InDesign users out there that are used to placing things and having them linked. So therefore, if you make a change to the original, it updates all your InDesign files. Same thing here in Photoshop. If I place an Illustrator or place a file in the Photoshop, it becomes a linked smart object. And if I make the change, it will make it to across the board to all the files that use it. So for example, if I now double click on that logo to open it up in Illustrator, I can go ahead and make a couple changes. The first one is the font that I have selected here. Instead of Rockwell, I would love um, Rosewood. And now that I've made the font change, the next thing we're gonna do is select the color and we'll switch it to uh, this nice gradient here that I have that I love so much. And let's go ahead and save it. And I, don't, I could close the file if I wanted to, but now let's head back to Photoshop. And as you can see, Photoshop is already updated and it's updated in both places. So again, that's that linked workflow. Now we can also use it in a different way. So for example, if I scroll down here to the join a club area and in the join a club area um, here, I have um, the circle background that they uh, are all using uh, as a smart object. But now if I go ahead and replace that, so we're gonna say replace contents and then we're gonna go out and find uh, one to use here. And let's go uh, Photoshop, um, Linked Smart Objects, and we'll go ahead and grab uh, the new one. And once I grab the new one, as you can see, it updates all of them across the board. And again, uh, since they're linked to the original, uh, that one PSD file I updated, it updated all the circle backgrounds in this case. So there you have it, the new Linked Smart Object workflow. Now let's head over and take a look at one of the performance enhancements here in Photoshop CC, and that is our enhanced use of OpenCL. Now Photoshop continues to get uh, faster and faster. We started with 64-bit optimizations and support, and of course, taking advantage of your graphics cards with OpenGL and now OpenCL support as well. So for example, uh, I'll run my filter menu and I'll do a smart sharpen um, using the sharpen area here, smart sharpen and we'll uh, leave it at 375% at five pixels. Now, that's going to take whatever time it takes on this file. So let's go ahead and click OK. And of course, your mileage will vary depending on the speed of your computer and the size of your file, but that was it. Okay, we have a short progress bar and it is now um, done. If we zoom in on this, we can see that it is over sharpened just like I intended. Now, let's go ahead and undo that and put it back to the way it was. And now we're gonna turn off the OpenCL support. That's right, you saw it a minute ago with it on. Now if we go to our performance and we turn off under advanced OpenCL, click OK, click OK, and now we try it again. Filter, uh, sharpen, smart sharpen, the exact same settings, click OK. Uh, in a second or two we get our progress bar, and as you can see that progress bar is going a lot slower. That's because it's no longer using the OpenCL support. So you get a performance boost because that's on by default just by having the latest version of Photoshop CC. Your filters will be faster, things will be faster inside Photoshop where they're optimized to take advantage of OpenCL. We're still waiting, still waiting, still waiting. It just finished. All right, so again, undo that. There's nothing you really have to do differently in Photoshop. It is on by default. So I just go back in and turn it on just like yours click OK, and now my Photoshop is faster for running filters and other operations. Last but not least inside Photoshop CC uh, is uh, enhanced uh, 3D support. Now, what I mean by that is Photoshop uh, has been doing 3D for quite a few versions now, and this version is no different. We can, of course, work inside 3D here inside Photoshop, which Photoshop is a great tool 
for uh, taking 3D models that were created maybe in other programs and adding the Photoshop finesse to them. Now what gets better inside Photoshop for 3D is the ability to go in and take something that you built inside Photoshop as a 3D model and print it with a 3D printer. That's right, if you have a 3D printer or you wanna work with a 3D printing service provider, you can now uh, have Photoshop send files to your 3D service provider, 3D printing service provider, and have this object, for example, made into a physical object from a 3D printer. So 3D printers are probably gonna take off like never before uh, starting this year. And we expect the price to continue to come down. We expect people to do more and more with 3D printers. And now Photoshop becomes a part of it because the 3D models you create or work on or finesse inside Photoshop can actually be turned into real physical objects. So with that, that's the quick look at the top features of the Photoshop CC January 2014 update. Hope you enjoy it. And again, as long as you have Photoshop CC or Creative Cloud, your products will just keep getting better. Thanks, and we'll catch you next time.